everything. It's been over a month since you last saw us and lots has happened. The seasons have been changing and family dynamics have been changing, including a visit from my father, who I'd only seen about one time in the past 15 years. Oh, and what is that? I can speak a little Swedish, can you? Boy. That sounds pretty good. It was nice to have Fox visiting with his grandfather and learning a little guitar and Swedish from him during the stay. And of course, as always, there were the orca. The orca, my spirit animal, who reminds me of a different life that we humans could live if we wanted to. A life without money and borders, a life without manipulation and propaganda, a life close to nature, naked and connected, where family, food, shelter, friendships, neighbors, water, and a respectful, symbiotic relationship with the natural elements around us is what each day is all about. Rainbows and God's voice are speaking to us, and Fox is growing up before our eyes. Changes are everywhere. sweet little forest lady needed some help with some projects yes i have a lot of projects that need to get done with this thing i got a i got a tractor that you can use Woo! i'm very excited to have this we should have gotten this four years ago top three things you want to do with this right away um clear the spot for our new property or for our new house um clear a spot for our, our greenhouse and mill some wood with a new sawmill so this will help put the wood on the sawmill like this can lift logs now instead of uh old man jake yes 
What do you think, Fox? We got you a tractor. Okay, let's see how high it goes. It's tied with a rope, side to side. Good. Good. There we oh, go. I'm so excited. Okay, you can go and uh, feed Fox dinner. I'm going to get to work. Okay. I'm so excited to use this thing. Cool. Well, that's going to make Fox cry. Oh, it's adorable. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Watch out. Nicole's coming. Okay, so for those of you who have been following our journey, you know that we should have gotten a tractor a long time ago. So this has been a long thing, a long time coming. It scares me though, you wanna know why? Why? I'm anti-tractor. Oh. <laughs> and it's cause I don't ever wanna scrape the topsoil. You know, I don't wanna gouge the earth and I think I'll be tempted if I get good at using this tractor. <laughs> oh, give me this. So I think it's really important that we are as gentle to the earth as possible and we just use the tractor to save my bat. Yeah. <laughs> my pet. Let's build a greenhouse. Yeah. Well, first we have to clear the spot for the home. And build uh, the greenhouse. Second project. Let's um, mill some wood for the home. <laughs> Lift the logs up with the tractor. Yeah. Exciting. <laughs>
Hey, how's it going out here? Hey, what's up? What you building? Just trying to get organized, you know? Trying to keep our stuff like a uh, boat and tractor out of the rain and the elements. And the carport, you know, that we built initially is not big enough for us anymore, you know? Yeah. So, I have a plan to mill and uh, build like an actual wood, like epic shed, like a 60 foot long shed. Yeah. But not right now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put up one of these temporary structures just to get everything safe. So that doesn't look like crapola underneath the tarp like that. Yeah. Cool. So this is a 28 foot long one. What do you think? I think it's perfect. And then we got kind of a smaller one to go next to it, right? On this side. So we got like one of these has um, maybe a boat, a tractor. The other one has a wood chipper and a van. Cool. Because uh, we're right on the ocean, you know. So every time it rains, that salt rainwater corrodes everything. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. How about this? I'm going to go inside and meet you to the rest, okay? <gasps> Do you hear the bird? Mm -hmm. Spring, springtime is coming. Hey Fox, is that the tractor?
How are the waves out there, Captain? It's rough. It's rough out here. How's it going out there? The grossest prawn harvest I've ever had. Look at look at this. It's like a horror movie. There's like a spider web of slime. And not only did I catch one, not two, not three, come in here, but four slime eels. And they're like look at this. Look, look at this. They're like extruding slime, like, like all over. This prawn is like Frodo and Lord of the Rings because it's caught by that. That spider. Alright, do you wanna see him go? you dinner. Oh it's a delicacy spotted on. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll take him and I'll put him in fresh water, put him in the sun, and then that will dry the, the slime off. Do you like when we steam them better or when we fry them better? I like them both. I don't, both? Think, I, I don't think I have a favorite. They both just taste different in their own way. Well, let's fry them tonight. I'm just gonna cut the really sharp like weapons off, but leave the legs, yeah? Oh yeah, that's, that's the best part. Cool. Do you like a tester? Here we go. Everything. Mmm. Tastes like a chip. Mmm. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> How is it? Well, love. Whenever I go to China, there's a lot of, instead of potato chips, there's a lot of like shrimp chips and stuff. There's like our own homemade shrimp chips. There's no potato chips. I put garlic, paprika, pepper, onion, powder, and salt on them. The legs. Puma and cut. <laughs> so that one is only fried in oil and then with my spice blend. This one, I soaked in cornstarch first, and then in oil. Okay. But no spices yet. 
It's yummy. <clears throat> Here we go. Mmm. Is that better? They're both really good, but this this is really good. Mmm. You know what I like about cooking them this way? Tell me. Less mess <laughs> and clean up, like with the shells and stuff. Just fry it up. Yeah. And eat it. And you're eating all of them. That's good. In the comments, would you guys eat it like this? Legs and all? It's good. Here come. Okay, go again. Here come. Hey, what's the best part about uh, gardening on sunny days in the quote-unquote winter time? No mosquitoes. But look, I'm, I'm finding some more carrots that we left behind. <laughs> look at this. Look at these guys. Huge. Wow. Here you go. Put it in the, uh, the sun choke bucket. Let's see if I can find some more. Here's where we're hiding from us, Fox. How's your apprentice there? He's good. I think he wants to get out and play in the soil, but not yet. Spring time's are coming. <laughs> Do you know how I know I'm getting older? Because I'm getting done doing all these new projects. I want to do fun projects that really interest me. I want to do some gardening projects and ocean, waterfall, diving, hiking projects, sailboat projects. In this part of the world, in order to be growing some serious food for your family, you know, I gotta have a greenhouse. And I can't tell you how many people's places I've been to since I grew up in British Columbia, since I really honed in my gardening in Arizona, the Sonoran Desert, and now putting all that expertise to, to work out here at Kamorebi. I've seen so many greenhouses and I've just, I've seen 99% subpar, broken down, yellow, abandoned, apocalypse looking greenhouses. And there's just something to be said about a classy, beautiful, thriving greenhouse. It's like the yurt. The yurt's a dead, cold place in that yurt. But as soon as Nicole and I get there and we light a fire in the wood stove, that fire becomes the heart and it's beating and then the yurt comes to life. and it becomes warm and it becomes a living organism. And I think I want to do the same thing with a greenhouse. I want to create a living organism greenhouse. And I just don't think I can do that by spending multiple six figures of money, which you can do on a greenhouse. You can buy greenhouses for like three to five hundred thousand dollars or more. I know it sounds crazy, but that's like for a elite, you know, stylish glass greenhouse and you can also pay next to nothing for a greenhouse and buy a really crappy greenhouse that will be super cheap but will also give you something super cheap it won't last it won't um, give you the greenhouse effect you're looking for which means you can't grow food you can't do sprouts you can't um, provide for your family so I'm gonna build this thing myself from scratch so I'm excited to have the greenhouse I'm excited to grow in the greenhouse but I know I'm getting older because I'm not too excited to build the greenhouse even though I'm going to build it and I'm also going to build it because I know looking back in three years from now, I'm going to watch these videos and I'm going to enjoy watching the video journal of Jake and Nicole and Fox and to see how we look younger and to see how we build this thing from scratch. And hey. I almost fell. Do you want to? Well, we appreciate you building it. Really? Well, we're going to help as much as we can. Okay, it's got to be big. Yeah. It's got to last for the rest of our lives. Yes. And it's got to have, it's got to have an epic percentage of it for compost so that this natural heat circulates inside so that it's not only being heated by the sun, but it's being heated by the microbes. Yes. Can I, can I do all these things, Mom? Yeah. Of course. Okay, fine. Then, how am I going to build this thing? We're going to build it out of metal? No, out of wood. Out of wood. 
Can I do it bushcraft style? Like with just wood poles and stuff? No, are we milling our own wood? Yes, we're milling our own wood. Ah, there we go. Which brings me back to why I'm upset. Why? I don't want to put together this sawmill. Oh. I think this sawmill is going to be a good quality sawmill. It's going to last us for decades and we're going to mill all the wood that we have to cut down for firewood or for sun, for solar, or for a garden. I'm going to take that wood and mill it up and use it to build us a home and a greenhouse, etc. So none of the wood and materials will leave in Komorebi. What do you think about that? I think that's great. Alright, so once it's together and we both know how to use it, I'm going to be happy. But I'm not looking forward to the next 48 hours of no, building a, this thing. It's a, it's a lot of boxes. Look like, how many pieces. A lot of boxes. <laughs> I don't understand why there's so many boxes. Well, because this particular sawmill, um, they thrive on the modular design. So you can start with a really basic sawmill and you can add components as you can afford it. Where most sawmills come, that's how they're delivered and that's it. Like what box do you open first? Where you that, all yes, open? exactly. Yes, exactly what I was thinking. I don't know. I don't even know where the manual is. <laughs> Anyways, go have fun with Fox. I'll build this thing and then I will mill you a greenhouse. That's beautiful and I will mill you a permanent house. <laughs> you gotta see this. All right, I got all the blocks out and uh, we're setting up here on the old abandoned logging road. And then you can see how next to the left side of the logging road is all this baby alder. I'm gonna call that down, wood chip with that, and use that to build healthy soil and uh, build pathways in the garden. And then in its place, I've got some uh, chestnuts and monkey puzzle. I'm going to have a whole hedge of monkey puzzle and chestnuts for the nuts. And for decades to come, we'll be able to use this sawmill, hopefully pass it down to Fox and let him grow old with it, with his kids. Anyways, trying to keep my eyes on the prize. Let's do some cool projects with it. Let's get it done. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, and when I ask you to be mine, oh my gosh.
，你很聪明的人。对，我给你，看看。Here， 我给你。Here, 你工作。耶！妈咪，你 also doing so good. Thanks for the help. He loves this game. It's like、uh, sensory play for him. Good job, bro. Here you go. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, I like your attire for this project. Your um, like seventeen, eighteen hundreds dress and. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I knew I was gonna help you with that. <sighs> no, I appreciate it. Here comes more help. Whoa! Are you gonna help me? Help me? <laughs> help me. <laughs> that dress giving you an accent. What if he just lifted that like Superman baby? Right, now? <laughs> right I would be speechless. Hi. You wanna help me push this into place? It's not quite there yet. I hope it works because it looks real good. I'm gonna shut this thing on for the first time here. So I've got both the Orient Power batteries here. I've got this one's positive going to that one's positive, and I have the negative going to the negative, and then I have the other positive of this one going to the positive of the disconnect, positive of the inverter, and I have the negative going from the negative of this one, long. I'll tie this up later to the negative of the inverter. Do you think I can hook this one、uh, on, power it up, and see if everything works together before I connect the solar panels? What do you think? I had to reposition the inverter to be higher because、um, they had these AC ports. So once the energy from the solar panels comes in, the sun gives energy to this, and then this converts it from DC energy to AC, and AC is the kind of energy that I can use. So once it converts it inside there, it shoots it out, and the wires have to go down. So I have to mount my breaker box down here. So I put it up high to make it easier. And I'm just gonna feed these guys in. This is probably boring to a lot of people out there, but like this is number six wires, pretty thick stuff. So I'm gonna just.、Um, Feed it in and then cut it to size. So I want to go about there.
Yeah, I just think that one of the mistakes that Nicole and I made was building the yurt in the location that we did because it doesn't get very much sun. Uh, we built it in that location because we unearthed an old logging road back in the day and I was really concerned that if I built the yurt anywhere else, there's so much soft ground here that um, the yurt would have started to sink on the left or sink on the right and would have become unstable. So we were smart for foundation building where we did the sun just started to shine you can hear the fan kicking on the inverter but there's not a lot of sunshine that hits the yurt unless it's the heart of the summer so i have to usually go up there with a power washer and power wash the yurt off you know once a year or once every two years just to keep it looking fresh because some uh, moss and stuff grows on the yurt being in the shade plus this is the sunniest spot of the property here where the cardboard is and where the new uh, home's gonna be. And it's just too far to run wiring to the yurt. I just don't wanna run wiring 200 feet along the ground to the yurt. So these lithium batteries, and these ones from Ocatel or Oak Heidel, these batteries in particular are our answer. You know, we have two of these guys that we bring out here when they have to charge. They charge either with the Orient power batteries feeding into them with the eight panel system outside, or they can have their own designated panel. I can have a panel just for these batteries outside. Then we pick them up and carry them in when they're charged. So if they last for a week, if they last for a day, it all depends on whether we're running the internet or whether we're running the camera gear or the editing program making these videos. And uh, if we use more power, we charge them as we need it. And having a system like this is our answer to having some modern conveniences but still be off the grid in terms of our power usage got no monthly statement, we got no monthly fees, and we're providing our energy, our electricity with the sun. All right, so, we can let the switch. Thank you. you like it? I'm like excited. Look, it's spinning. Whoa, whoa. It's so funny that these have been out for so long, but we're like, ooh, why <laughs> It's like the first time. Because we don't have one. That's good. That means that my oh. pump turned on and now it's getting water. Look. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> All your diapers are in there. Mama doesn't have to hand wash them anymore. Yeah, this is really big. It's working. Here we go. I'm so excited. How does it feel to be washing laundry like a modern person, but with rainwater and the sunshine? It feels really good. It feels, I don't know, um, whoa. It feels powerful. Does that make sense? Like, why is that? Pun intended. <laughs> but we hold the power as in terms of like, we don't rely on anybody, it's all ours. You know, like we are responsible for the power that we put into this. Does that make sense? They call that self-reliance. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, this is really exciting. We've been doing our laundry by hand for so many years in cloth diapers or taking it into town at the laundromat. Um, so to have this is like 
next level. So it's, and I owe it all to Jake. I mean, Jake did it all. I, I can't really honest, I can't take any of the credit. Um, so, but I'll be out here doing the laundry. So. I'm going to say thanks to Orient Power because the batteries and inverter behind you are pretty classy and yeah. a lot of power for a very minimalist setup. Yeah. Those red batteries down below are just uh, normal six volt batteries that I'm using for a different project. I just, I'm actually using the Orient Power power wall to float those off and charge them up to full. Yeah. Now you built a very awesome setup over there. It looks very clean and looks really nice. You hear that sound? Yeah, is it working? That's the sunshine breaking through the clouds hmm. and it responds. See, that's oh. the, that means a lot of watts coming in right now to charge your washing machine. All right, here in the mobile workshop, here's kind of an extreme example of a bunch of different gadgets, tools that I have plugged into the Ocatel or the Ocatel battery, and it's handling it wonderfully. It sits nice on the counter. It's like a square design. Every one of these lithium batteries from different companies are different shapes, and I like the shape of this one. Two handles, square. Got this great shop light plugged in here on the left. On top, I've got this... Uh, extra battery stick that I tend to travel with a lot for my computer and phone. It's like a 20,000 milliamp hour extra battery. So when I have a good sunny day like today, I'll plug these in when I know I have enough sun so I have extra battery for my phone when I need it. And then uh, these shop lights, the GoPro plugged in there. I got a couple DeWalt batteries, some big boys, uh, my computer, my phone, as well as the uh, the electric blower and let's see what we're uh, pulling here on the screen we're pulling about 107 watts of energy going out and uh, that's not bad so all this stuff plugged in right now it'll all be plugged it'll all be charged up to full in about an hour and then when the battery here is powered down to like 20 percent 30 percent I'll just um, head right back over to the lithium guys from Orient Power, and I'll plug it in, top it back off again. And I'll put a link below this video in the comments and description if you guys wanna check out these Ocatel or Ocatel batteries. The reason why I like them so much is because if you ever get a chance to plug them into the wall and let them be used as like a backup generator, uh, they charge so fast to the wall. So you can hook up a lot of solar panels to them, but when you plug them into the wall using one of these cords, they just charge up in, I mean, minutes. It really is incredible. They can uh, handle 1100 watts is what I usually see uh, when you plug them into the wall. And other batteries that I have from other companies tend to charge at like 300 watts, 400 watts. So that means that they take about three or four times longer. I plug this guy in, I come back in 45 minutes and it's all charged up ready to go, which is great for me when I'm plugging them into the solar panels out there, the eight system and the Orient power batteries, because when those Orient powers are full and the sun is still shining, I don't want to waste that sun so I'll come over here and plug in an extra lithium and 45 minutes or less is charged up to full and I've got bonus batteries. You know, when I come across other people in the Canadian wilderness that have secret homesteads out here, uh, they all carry a generator, a gas powered generator on hand. 
and um, extra cans of gas. And a lot of them are real stingy with the gas. When the prices of gas go down, they fill up all their tanks. So they have energy, uh, electricity for a rainy day. And if their grid power ever goes out, they can just kind of pull the cord like a chainsaw, rev that generator up and run their house off of it. But I think that for a younger person, you know, we might look to these lithium batteries uh, as the answer to replace a gas powered generator. These guys hold a ton of energy. You can charge your car with them. You can charge your computer and cameras and phones with them. And I'm slowly changing everything I have to go electric because coming up the container house we're building is gonna be in the sunniest spot of our property. And I just feel that even though we're not in a very sunny place compared to other places, like compared to the tropics, compared to California, compared to Texas, compared to Florida, compared to Arizona, we do have enough sun here that can charge all of these batteries up. And if I can live off the batteries that are in the house normally, I consider these to be extra ones. These are my gas powered generators, so to speak. And so when I have a sunny week and all the batteries get to float charge or they get to full, I can fill these guys up, store them away for a rainy day. And if anything were to happen, I've got some bonus generators ready to go. This is your Tractor. Tractor, Every day, it's starting to feel more and more like spring and I'm just so excited. There are more birds that are chirping and coming back. And I feel any day now we're gonna hear the frogs. Jake uh, thinks that he saw some mosquitoes yesterday and it's just uh, something in the air. And it's gonna be the first day of spring coming up and I'm just so excited. <laughs> I love the spring. If you guys have been following our journey, um, you know, I just love the spring. I love everything that comes up in the spring. Are you excited for the spring? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yay for the springtime. Are you excited for the springtime? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Happy spring equinox and happy first day of spring. Yay! 
on this very cloudy, rainy, gloomy day. <laughs> but spring is in the air. I feel it. Very exciting. In the background, that is Jake clearing our spot for our new home and for our new garden and for our new greenhouse. So very exciting for that. I wish I can help him, um, but I can't because I got this little one here, but I'll do the best that I can. Yeah, do you hear daddy? He's working really hard on clearing the spot for our future home. Um, ooh, it's my first time coming out and seeing it. That's very exciting. Let's go check it out. Let's go say hi. Should we go say hi to dad? Hey. Hi. I'm kind of going through. It's so bushwhacky. I'm going through and kind of cutting everything high at first. Or else I get stabbed in the eyes. Yeah. And then I'll wood chip a bit. Then I'll go through a second wave and get everything at root level, at ground level. Yeah. Cool. It's looking good. We have an infinite amount of alder and salmonberry and blackberry. And that's all that I'm cutting down. So we can utilize the alder, salmonberry, and blackberry everywhere else to start thinking in your brain in its place. What do you want to plant here? Raspberries, fruit trees, keep your fruit nice. Yeah. What's that horrible looking pile behind you? This pile is from, I think the old logging days. So when they logged this property, they kind of make these like big piles of stumps and stuff. And they, I think that's what that is. That looks like it. Okay, I need you to break that whole pile down and put it in this little trailer. <laughs> yeah, right. Can you try to burn it? Like, I don't even think time? so. It's so wet. It's like a big wet mulch pit. I think we have to break it up with the tractor. So I just finished up a workout. I did leg day oh, and some abs. And now Fox is doing messy play. Um, we're doing cornstarch and water, which is very, very messy, but it's perfect. I always try to do cornstarch and water or like really extreme messy play activities when he has to take a bath. So, so then I can just pop him in the bath right after, but he loves it. It's very messy. If you guys have ever played with cornstarch and water, it's actually a lot of fun. Huh. Yep. Yeah. So when you add the perfect ratio together of cornstarch and water, oh, I might have to add a little bit more cornstarch, but it kind of like just melts, but it's hard. I don't know if that makes sense. But you can kind of like, I need to add a little bit of more. Yeah. What do you think? 
And I bet you by the end of this, he will end up in the box because he likes to sit in boxes. <laughs> Okay, so I added a little bit of more cornstarch, and this is what it's supposed to do. It kind of like, you can make it into a ball, and then if you like release it, then it kind of just melts in your hand. It's really cool. And I should note that this is actually a pretty easy cleanup. Um, once you like kind of let it dry, it just kind of flakes up. Oh, where are you going? We are five minutes in. <laughs> we are messy. Yes, yes, yes. Having fun? Betty button, Betty button, Betty button. <laughs> Got my gardening partner with me. You ready to do some gardening? Yeah. Mama, it's all Shema. There's a row here. This one needs a hua yuan. See if you can see my original ones. Right here. Here's one. So sweet. Let's see what do we have in here? Can you taste some tofu? You want to dip any of it? What do you see? Is that a big tractor? <gasps> Is that a big tractor? Tractor? The tractor? It's a really big tractor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so today is a very big day for us here. You know, Jake and I have been pretty independent with our property. We've we've done everything by ourselves. Um, you know, in terms of building our home and raised beds and solar and I mean everything we've been doing ourselves. So one of Jake's New Year's resolution this year was to get some help on some projects. You know, we can't do everything ourselves and I also want to save Jake's back. So for this new house, we were planning on clearing it ourselves. Um, let me rephrase that. Jake was planning on clearing it himself because I'm with Fox and you know, I can't, I can't come over here with Fox. It's too loud with the, you know, chainsaw and tractor and wood chipper going. It's just too loud. So, you know, there's a guy that lives here in our little community that has an excavator and he does work like this for people who need places leveled or cleared and pretty much kind of have like a blank canvas for our new house and for our new um, greenhouse and for our raised beds. And I'm just, I'm really excited. It's a very big day. Huh, Fox, are we excited? He's just excited to see the big tractor. We're gonna go over there and check it out here.
that's the picture. All right, so let's go from this stick, let's go six feet in. All right, so are these two insulators six feet apart? Watching him work. Let's get on my face. Can you watch them do their thing? Or putting in mommy's hair. See, pretty. For those of you who have subscribed and followed us recently, you know that we are building a permanent off-grid house near the yurt. The yurt will become a guest house for family when they visit, and the new house will be constructed out of used shipping containers, sometimes called sea cans, on the outside, and the wood that we mill ourselves on site for the inside. We began preparing the foundation because the sea cans are about one week away from being delivered. We will level out an area of the sunniest land of our acreage and place the sea cans on these concrete blocks. Our property is boat access only and thus any material that we bring needs to be planned and delivered by barge. Special thanks to Andrew, Charlie and Emmett for their expertise, time, skill and gentle touch with this heavy equipment. It's crunchy face. 